just the last couple of weeks I've been sharing about the uh, about the Holy Spirit, and I just felt to just keep going talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, he's the third person of the Godhead and equal to God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. So he's vitally important. Just because he's always the third one mentioned doesn't mean he's the third uh, least important. He's, he's equally God as what the Father is and the Son is. And, um, you know, right through, uh, you know, the, the Old Testament, there's always talking about the Holy Spirit, not a real lot of mention. It's all money, money about God the Father. And then, uh, you know, some of the prophecies um, talking about the Messiah coming and the Holy Spirit is just uh, there in amongst all the myths. But the main thing with difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is that the Holy Spirit only came upon uh, the priest, the prophet and the, um, the king. Uh, and very rarely, it wasn't until the New Testament when the Holy Spirit came to live inside of us. And it's just vitally important that we that we understand that that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. When we ask Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior, um, that He comes in, the Spirit of God comes in, the whole nature of God comes in, and we are born again. We are recreated. We are brought out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of His dear Son. And, um, you know, so I like talking about the Holy Spirit. A lot of people uh, are just getting a, a revelation of the Holy Spirit and just, you know, there's been uh, moves of the Holy Spirit. Hi, Pastor Joseph. Good to see you. Um, you know, and, and it's just great uh, that the Holy Spirit is, um, hi, church. That's good over there. So I just wanted to have a look at a couple of scriptures in uh, Matthew. Uh, even John the Baptist started talking about uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he said, I will, I will baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not fit to carry. Uh, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So, uh, you know, John the Baptist introduced uh, Jesus and uh, spoke about him, uh, that he went forth and uh, spoke about him and uh, that what Isaiah spoke about John the Baptist and about Jesus, uh, John the Baptist also proclaimed. But the most important thing that he proclaimed was that Jesus would baptize with us, with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And, uh, and of course, when he, when he came, uh, he baptized uh, Jesus and then it says, um, when Jesus came, uh, you know, the, uh, as soon as uh, Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that, at that moment, heaven was open and saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice came from heaven said, saying, this is my son whom I love with him. I am well pleased. So, um, you know, just talking about the Holy Spirit uh, and introducing the Holy Spirit. And then um, Jesus himself uh, started talking about the Holy Spirit. And in Luke chapter four, when he was in the synagogue, he asked the synagogue officials for the parchment. Uh, and then he read, uh, turned to the place uh, where it says in uh, Luke four, chapter 18, where Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom from the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So we can see little bit by little bit, the Holy Spirit is being introduced, and Jesus started speaking about the Holy Spirit. Most of the scriptures about the Holy Spirit that Jesus spoke about is found in the Gospel of John. And we're going to turn to there and just uh, read a couple of scriptures um, about John's gospel. But, you know, um, but even though even though the, the Holy, he was spoke, speaking about the Holy Spirit, the early disciples uh, really struggled with understanding the reason why Jesus came. They Because all that they were expecting him to do was to bring back the kingdom of Israel, uh, to bring back the kingdom that, that King David had. They uh, they still didn't understand, even though they were with him for three years, they still never understood really what Jesus was there for. They knew he was the Messiah. 
They knew that the Old Testament prophets talked about the Messiah and that he was going to come. And if you look at Isaiah 53, it says that, um, you know, that he was going to bear our sins and our iniquities, uh, bear our sicknesses and our diseases and all of our sorrows. Uh, but, you know, they believed that the Messiah was going to come. Uh, he did all those signs and wonders and miracles, and they believed that he was the Messiah. Uh, but about dying on the cross, um, and the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they just didn't have any idea, even though they were with him for three years. Now, the reason why that is that they had they struggle uh, with understanding the things of the Holy Spirit and the purposes that Jesus came was because the Holy Spirit wasn't living inside of them wasn't living inside of them they were with jesus was with them for three years and they still didn't understand but if you look at the disciples when they got uh, baptized in the holy spirit and the spirit of god came inside of them they understood nearly straight away uh, the purposes of god because the holy spirit came inside of them and started bringing revelation knowledge of the purposes of Jesus. And that's why, and then right through the Acts of the Apostles, we see all the disciples, uh, you know, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit and signs and wonders were happening in their lives. And they finally understood because the Holy Spirit came to live inside of us. And that's one of the, the things that the Holy Spirit does. He comes to live inside of us, to bring revelation knowledge, First of all, he comes inside of us when we're born again. He leads us to the cross. No man can come to the Father except the Holy Spirit draws him. And, um, you know, I don't know whether you remember when you got saved. I, you know, I still remember, even though it happened over 50 years ago, I still remember the Holy Spirit, you know, just powerfully touching my life, uh, bringing revelation. I realized that God loved me. I realized that I was a sinner. I realized that Jesus died on the cross for me. And uh, I knew he came to live inside of me. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit uh, about a couple of weeks later. Uh, and he came to live inside of me. And um, so the early disciples had the Holy Spirit come to live inside of them. And, uh, and he was able to bring revelation knowledge and they stepped out on the word and they began to do signs and wonders uh, as uh, as Jesus had said them as as sent them out to uh, to do. So let's have a look at a couple of scriptures. Um, let's have a look at John chapter fourteen, uh, verse twenty six. And uh, so this is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit um, in in the book of in, in the Gospels, uh, and and the, he spoke a lot about in short chapters fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen about the Holy Spirit. But they still didn't quite fully understand. But let's have a look at John fourteen, twenty six says there there it is but the cap the counselor the holy spirit whom the the father will send in my name will teach you all things and he will remind you of everything that i have said to you so jesus was talking about the holy spirit but it wasn't until they were baptized in the holy spirit that and and the holy spirit came that they started understanding the Holy Spirit and for and then the Holy Spirit was fulfilling his ministry and that in that he was bringing to remembrance all the things that Jesus had said to them. Uh, and in John 14, 16 and 17, it says there, uh, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and he will be in you. Powerful, isn't it? The Holy Spirit will come. Uh, he, the Jesus was going to go away to the Father and the Father was going to send the Holy Spirit and he was going to be in us and he was going to live in us and he was going to re remain in us. In all of these scriptures that I'm going to read out, there is one common Greek word. All the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all talked about a Greek word called parakletos. Parakletos means helper, counselor, comforter, uh, teacher, uh, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, uh, and all of those things. And all of those things the Holy Spirit does when he comes to live inside of us. He's our helper, he's our counselor, he's our teacher, 
Uh, he's our intercessor. He's our advocate. And he's our strengthener. All of those things, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us and he helps us. And that's very important that we understand that. Let's have a look at John 16. Let's go over to John 16 and have a look at verse 7 and verse 8. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counsellor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. So that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit, uh, to come and, and to help us and to, and to help us. And, and uh, it's very important that we understand that he is in us and he's with us and he's for us and he abides in us. And uh, the main thing that the Holy Spirit does is that he helps us and he strengthens us, encourages us and teaches us all of those things the holy spirit will do and he will he will enlighten you bring revelation knowledge so the holy spirit never produces a failure he never produces a failure whenever you have the holy spirit whenever you're born again you are a champion you are a winner uh he never produces failures and that's important that we understand that god has created you for a purpose God has created you for, for significance. God has created you to make a difference. God, and the most important thing, God has created you for a purpose. He has inserted you into history at the right time in history for a purpose. And, um, and the Holy Spirit will um, bring that revelation knowledge of the purpose that God has created you for. And if you don't know what that purpose is, then you need to come into a, a, a real intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit and with the Father and allow the Holy Spirit to take you to the Father, to take you to the throne room so that God can reveal through the Holy Spirit the reason why you're here, the purpose that he has for you and the direction that you are to go. And that's very important that, that we do that. Um, you know, if we don't do, if we don't do, then the Holy Spirit can't help us. If we don't do, the Holy Spirit can't help us. If we look at John 15, just go back to John 15, verse 26 and 27. It says there, when the counselor, that is when the helper, when the Holy Spirit comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And have a look at verse 27. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. And that's very important that we realize that you have to testify. You have to witness. What does a witness do? A witness tells what has happened. The witness has been there and knows what's happened and can and, and can uh, verify everything that had happened. So the disciples went out into all the world to preach the gospel because they were witnesses of what Jesus had done um, in the world. And that's very important that we do, do that. So uh, we are the doer. We have to do. If we don't do, then the helper won't come. Um, it's a lot of people in the church have it the other way around, that the Holy Spirit has got to go and we are the helper. But really, in fact, the most important thing is that we have to go, we have to do, and the Holy Spirit will help us. Very important that we understand that. So the Holy Spirit, um, you know, we, we think that he's the doer but and we are the helper, but that's not right. We are the doer and the Holy Spirit is the helper. Sometimes we are waiting for the Holy Spirit, waiting. We sit at home, we pray and we pray and we wait for the Holy Spirit. But in actual fact, the Holy Spirit is waiting on us. The Holy Spirit is waiting on us. Now, if we look at Mark chapter 16, where it talks about the Great Commission, if you look at Mark 16 and verse 17, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues, for they will pick up snakes and with their hands and, and it won't hurt them. If they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. And all they and, and they will place their hands on the sick and they shall, shall get well. 
Now have a look at verse 19 and verse 20. And the Lord Jesus has spoken to them and he was taken up into heaven and he sat down at the right hand of the father. Then in verse 20, it says, then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs following. Confirm the word by signs following. Now, if the signs are following, there's got to be something going out in front of. That makes sense? If signs are following, signs and miracles are following, something must be going out before it. Because if it's following, it's got to be following something. What is it following? It's following us. Jesus said to go into all the world. And if you look at the scripture in Matthew about the Great Commission, that's probably a better uh, scripture to read, but it says there, because it says there that Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel and, um, and, and, uh, and, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And in Mark, it says here uh, that these signs will follow them. Uh, so what are they following? They're following the disciples going out and doing the work. So we are the doers. The church is the doer. And the Holy Spirit is the follower. And he will only confirm the word with signs of following if he's following us. And if we are going out there doing something, and that is going out and preaching the gospel. We have to take the gospel outside the four walls of the church and out into the street, out into the marketplace, out into our work situation, out into the shopping centers and things like that. That's what we have to do. And if we're not doing that, then the Holy Spirit can't help us because he's only a helper. We have to do the work. And we've looked at um, we've looked at Peter and John going into the temple in Acts chapter 3, I think it is, after the day of Pentecost. Peter and John were going into up to the temple to pray. And as they were going into the gates uh, there, they came across the crippled man. And, um, and, and the, he was begging alms. And, uh, and asking, and, um, and Peter said to them, silver and gold have I none. He was looking for money, but Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Now, Peter and John didn't ask God to heal the man. Peter and John healed the man. But you must remember we can't heal anybody. So it wasn't Peter healing the man. It was the resurrection power of the Holy Ghost inside Peter that he was releasing by faith, healing the man. So they went, they prayed, they lay hands on the man and, and, and the signs and wonders were following. That's what I'm saying about we as disciples of the Lord Jesus have to go into all the world and preach the gospel. If we're not going, if we're not doing, then the Holy Spirit is not following. The Holy Spirit can't help us. He will only help us to preach the gospel. And, uh, and that's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and what John the Baptist was talking about, that Jesus will baptize you, you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And that's very important that we understand that. So as we are, uh, as we're being obedient to the word, as we're doing the word, then the Holy Spirit will be our helper. The Holy Spirit will be the healer. And all those things that the Holy Spirit will be, he will be because we have stepped out in faith and gone out before and being obedient to what Jesus said to us to do. And that was to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. And that's very important that we do that. So if there's, um, and the reason why there's not a real lot of activity in the church is because we're not doing what, what Jesus told us to do. We're not going out into, into all the world and preaching the gospel. We're not laying hands on the sick. We're not casting out demons. Uh, we're not speaking in new tongues. Uh, we're not picking up uh, scorpions. Uh, we, and if we do happen to drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. So if we're not doing, if there's no activity in the church, it's probably it's because uh, it, that we're not doing what we're supposed to do. 
So, uh, you know, the main purpose of tonight was just to encourage you to, to step out on the word, step out and do the things that God has told you to do. He never produces a failure. He empowers you for a purpose. Jesus was the, the son of God who became the son of man. And he, as a, at, at, because he came as a man, he was born as a baby and grew up to be a man. He never stayed a baby. He grew up to be the purpose uh, that he was uh, born to be. Um, and, and, and he needed the Holy Spirit. He said that the Holy Spirit has come upon me um, because he, he has anointed me. So if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit and needed that anointing of the Spirit, how much more do we need that baptism of the Holy Spirit? So it's important, very important that we understand that. So as we go and do what Jesus has told us to do, go into all the world, lay hands on the sick, cast out demons and all of those things, then he will follow with signs and wonders and miracles. I don't know whether you've, uh, you sometimes you'll see on, on the news uh, and it talks about the, uh, the economy and talks about our exports and imports and it'll, it'll take you to a, a container ship where uh, a port where you see containers coming in. And, um, you know, have you seen how the container gets picked up off the ship and gets put on a, a, a semi-trailer on the port? How does that happen? Does the does the the guy get down with his hands and lifts up the container and puts it on on the truck? He doesn't do that, does he? He doesn't do that. He's up in his air conditioned office um, container compartment above the crane, and he's pulling all the levers. So he's not doing all the work. He's just pulling the levers. It's the crane that's doing the heavy lifting. And that's the same with the Holy Spirit. We have to go and do, and then as we do that, the Holy Spirit will do all the heavy lifting. Heavy lifting. He's our helper. And I've tried to emphasize that, that he's our helper. He's our counselor. He's our comforter. He's our teacher. He's our strengthener. He empowers us with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have that whole nature of God living inside of us and we need that resurrection power to uh, to release that resurrection power that we have in us that when we lay hands on the sick they shall recover and it's not us doing it we're just laying the hands and we're believing by faith it's the it's it's God that's doing it it's the Holy Spirit that's doing it he's doing the heavy lifting he's our helper but we have to go and do also, if you've, um, I've, I've, um, I've this, I was a, a medical sales rep for quite a few number of years, and I've actually been in operating theatres where, um, where people, have, uh, where surgeons have done uh, operations. A surgeon always has a theatre nurse alongside him. He has a, a surgeon assistant on one side, he's on this side, and he has an assistant nurse right alongside him. That assistant nurse, he knows exactly what the, what the surgeon is going to do. And he will do all the operation. And all, this, all he has to do is to go like that. And the, um, and the nurse, the theater nurse, will put the instrument that he wants because he, she knows what he's going to do next. It's a bit like that with the Holy Spirit. He knows what we're going to do next. We have to go out and do. He knows what we're going to have to do. Uh, he knows what we're going to do, do next. So he's reaching out and he's our helper. Like the theater nurse is the helper for the surgeon, the Holy Spirit is our helper. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what's going to happen next. And he reaches out and he gives it all the, all the, the power and the authority that we need uh, to accomplish uh, God's purpose that he has for our lives. The same with a pastor on a, on a prayer line. The pastor goes along and he's praying for people. He doesn't know exactly what is required, what that person needs, but the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what that person needs. So, you know, he, he might only know a little bit of information, but the Holy Spirit knows the whole information. So he's laying hands on people's uh, heads and laying hands and believing God for, for, uh, for healing and deliverance and things like that. But it's the Holy Spirit that imparts whatever is required into that person's life. So as they lay hands on the Holy Spirit, knows exactly what's required, and he uh, imparts into that person's life through the faith of the pastor. The pastor has to lay hands. The pastor has to have faith. 
but it's the Holy Spirit that is the helper. It's the Holy Spirit that brings that anointing and that brings whatever is required to see a breakthrough, to see a healing, to see a deliverance in that person's life. And, uh, you know, it's very important that we do that. But you might think, well, you know, I, I won't go until I'm led by the Holy Spirit. Well, listen, you know, you are led by the Holy Spirit. I don't know whether you have there in the in the, in Africa or in the Philippines, you have a thing uh, called a backseat driver. Has anybody heard that expression, a backseat driver? You know, we have them over here in Australia. You know, you're driving along, but you've got someone in the backseat or someone alongside you telling you where to go and what to do all the time. And uh, sometimes it can be frustrating, but sometimes it can be quite handy. You know, that's the what, what the Holy Spirit is, is like. He is in the back seat. He's alongside us, telling us where to go and what to do. And he is leading us. Just because he's leading us doesn't mean that he's got to be in front. You know, we have to be in front and, and we, we are being led by the Holy Spirit. And he doesn't have to be in front uh, to be the leader. He wants to be our helper. He wants us to go in, into all the world and to preach the gospel. And he comes alongside and he'll tell us to go this way and to go that way, like a backseat driver do, does. And backseat driver, when you, when you get a good one, they are very good. When you get a bad one, they're very bad. But the Holy Spirit is a very, very good backseat driver. But just because he's a backseat driver doesn't mean he's leading up in front. He can be back there and you're the one leading. You're the one doing. If there's, if you're not the doing, if you're not doing, then uh, the Holy Spirit can't help you. So I just want to encourage you tonight. I hope you got something out of that. I just want to do, encourage you about stepping out in faith. Um, and, and all you pastors and leaders, uh, you've got to step out in faith, step out on the word, uh, do the word, uh, be obedient to the word. And, um, and as you're stepping out in faith and being obedient to word, then the Holy Spirit can come alongside you and come along behind you and help you and be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And uh, like Peter and John, when they pray for the crippled man, um, it was uh, Peter that laid hands on it. It was Peter healing the person. Well, it wasn't healing. It wasn't Peter healing the person. It was the Holy Spirit within him because he never prayed to God for the, to, for the God to heal the man. Um, and, and you look at, look at the gospel, John, uh, Jesus delegated that power to all the disciples when he sent the 12 out. And when he sent the 72 out, he always said to them, you go and heal the sick. You lay hands on the on the blind. You lay hands on the cripple. You will lay hands on the sick. And it even says that in, in Mark 16, these signs will follow them. And, and that was them doing the work, but it was the Holy Spirit that was empowering them and, and bringing that and seeing those manifestations of those answered prayers through, uh, through the believers laying in the hands and doing all the work and being obedient to the work. So I hope you got something out of that. I'll uh, take you off uh, mute and um, 